For thousands of years, the American River Basin has been home to one of Earth's great migration stories. Every year, like clockwork, Chinook salmon would return to the valley streams to spawn and recreate their eternal circle of life. After having spent between two to seven years wandering thousands of miles in the Pacific Ocean, now adults, the Chinook or King Salmon will seek out the freshwater streams of their birth. Here they will spawn, completing their circle of life. Once they re-enter the freshwater streams of the Sacramento Valley and foothills, their bodies are unable to readapt to fresh water. They will perish, but even in death they will play a vital role. Their carcasses will become food for the native fauna or become plant food for the valley's flora. For a successful salmon run, an early rainfall is a necessity. NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, reported that for the year 2014, California had recorded unseasonably high temperatures as well as a severe lack of precipitation. The California Central Valley recorded the driest period in the state's recorded history. NOAA also warned that the severe drought would continue into 2015. Precipitation totals for the Sacramento Valley for June 30th, 2014 through November 30th, 2015 equaled only 1.57 inches. Normal for this period should have been 14.84 inches. State restrictions on urban watering of lawns and gardens further reduced runoff into local streams. Each November, adult salmon re-enter San Francisco Bay and begin their journey into either the San Joaquin, American, or Sacramento Rivers. On the Sacramento River, just north of Discovery Park, a few will enter Steelhead Creek, which will in turn flow into Dry Creek. Their destination will be the Dry Creek Watershed. The Chinook swim upstream through the Sacramento Valley, reaching into the current cities and communities of Roseville, Rockland, Loomis, and Granite Bay. Here they will spawn in our local creeks. Late in November, the Dry Creek Conservancy will conduct their annual salmon count. Participants walk our local streams, recording the number of sightings of live salmon, carcasses, and reds. Salmon nests are called reds. After the female deposits her eggs and the male fertilizes the eggs, the resulting nests have a distinct structure. To understand the data collected from the yearly November salmon count, Many variables must be taken into account. On the graph, we see the past five years. The blue line represents the live salmon. The green line shows the number of carcasses tagged, and the yellow line indicates the possible reds. 2015, 2013, and 2010 indicate extremely poor migration years. On the second chart, we have added rainfall amounts. The November 2015 count 
indicated a near collapse of Chinook salmon migration. As we have noted earlier, 2015 was one of the driest years in California's recorded history. The fall rains arrived late. Only a partial salmon count was taken in early December. In November 2014, a significant amount of precipitation occurred in the second half of the month. As a result, the salmon count occurred on schedule. The wet weather allowed the salmon access to their spawning grounds. In 2013, rainfall was only 0.88 inches. Drought once again complicated the run. 2012 showed a normal rainfall. As a result, numbers of live sightings increased remarkably. The 2011 salmon run precipitation was poor, and again the result was a poor salmon run. 2010 seems to have been an anomaly. Adequate rainfall, but a very poor salmon run. While having a normal rainy season might be the most important factor in preserving the Chinook salmon, other factors have also contributed to the Chinook being designated an endangered species. In 1985, California placed the Chinook salmon on the state's endangered species list. The federal government followed in like manner five years later. The lucky few fingerlings, Chinook, who are able to enter the Pacific Ocean will face a multitude of dangers. While circling 1,500 miles in the Pacific Ocean, the Chinook will feed on aquatic insects and small fish. Global climate change creating warmer oceans could disrupt the salmon's food supply. Their prey may migrate further north seeking colder waters. From historical records, warm El Nino currents should have brought California and the Central Valley relief from the record drought. Both the 1998 and 1983 El Nino currents did just that, but the strong 2015 El Nino weather pattern has brought the Central Valley only normal precipitation. Weather projections for 2016-2017 call for continued drought conditions. If projections prove true, there will be further strain on Chinook salmon survival rates. Anomalies for a poor spawning season can also be caused by circumstances having occurred upstream in the spawning bed. For a successful season, salmon need clean, cool, oxygenated water. To handle both the past, present, and projected future population growth, 
the Placer County Transportation Agency will ask voters to approve a one-half cent sales tax increase. Will the proposed transportation improvements further degrade or will they improve the health of our watershed? These are important questions we will have to investigate. The Dry Creek Conservancy is a nonprofit organization dedicated to both preserving and improving the watershed in the American River Basin. We support restoration projects, both large and small. We also support youth outreach projects, helping students learn about our environment. Look for us at community environmental fairs and conferences. Learn how you can become involved in helping to preserve our watershed. Follow us on Facebook or on our website, www.trycreekconservancy.org. View other videos on the history and ecology of the Dry Creek Watershed on our website. Or you can find us at youtube.com slash user slash MichaelStark1.